Je vais laisser une petite bulle. Bonjour, mesdames, messieurs. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be able to receive uh, the Prime Minister, dear Boris Johnson, here today in Paris. Uh, very pleased about the, your first visit to France since you took office. We had uh, opportunities to talk on the telephone a couple of hours after you took office as Prime Minister, and I'm very pleased that today we have a chance to discuss um, more. Please allow me to say first and foremost that the relationship between our two countries is essential and immutable, no matter when and no matter the circumstances. It is the case in particular when it comes to foreign policy, defense, and your decision to come to Paris embodies uh, this, the necessity of fostering this relationship, this privileged relationship. This relationship is anchored in a history, a long history. There are also treaties between our two countries which go beyond the European Union, and there are some genuine commitments and engagement in um, crisis, ongoing crisis we have to deal with together, like Iran, the Sahel, the fight against climate change, girls' education. The engagement of both our countries together has always been constant and remains essential. A few days ahead of the G7, our discussions will also enable us to closely coordinate on these matters. Of course, we'll also inevitably talk about uh, Brexit, and you know my position in this respect. It is near, and I'm well aware that this is in, on your mind day in, day out. First of all, my position has always been to respect the sovereign choice made by the British people to leave the European Union. I regret it. Had I been a British uh, voter, I would have made a different choice. But I respect democracy and the wishes of peoples, and I therefore believe that we now have to implement this choice. Then, my position consists in um, protecting and strengthening the European project, the single market, our ability to decide and to build a stronger and more sovereign European Union. This is the reason why I always worked so that we would never weaken this project in our negotiations and the decisions we have to take. Lastly, it is about preserving and deepening the bilateral relationship, which is um, very much anchored in history and forward-looking. It is against this spirit that the European Union has at length negotiated an agreement, a withdrawal agreement with the United Kingdom. I will not get into the details of this agreement, and it does not belong to any member of the European Union alone to negotiate or to renegotiate this agreement. But I would like to say that the key elements of this agreement, including the Irish backstop, are not just technical constraints or legal quibbling, but indeed some genuine indispensable guarantees to preserve the stability in Ireland, to preserve the the integrity of the single market, which is the foundation of the European project. And this is very much um, fully part of this uh, accord negotiated by the United Kingdom and the European Union. In addition, the European Union has always said that it was available to discuss, depending on the wishes of the United Kingdom, um, our future relationship, which in the end is essential as it is about building our future, uh, our joint future. We will discuss all of that together uh, in a minute, but I would like to say, as a friend and as an ally of the United Kingdom, that it belongs to the United Kingdom alone to decide about its destiny, to decide about the way you will um, leave the European Union and the basis of uh, the future relationship. We are actively preparing for all the uh, possibilities, including that of an exit without an agreement on the 1st of, the 1st of October. It's not the choice of the European Union, but it is our joint responsibility vis-à-vis -vis our fellow citizens, vis-à-vis -vis our territories and our companies. And we have already prepared for that. But I know, no matter what, that the future of the United Kingdom, uh, considering our history and our values, cannot but be European. 
all geography speaks by itself, and I can say with confidence that the future will confirm it beyond the uncertainties that can be those of uh, the present. Ladies and gentlemen, such are the few words I would like, I wanted to share with you. Once again, I'm extremely pleased to host uh, uh, Boris Johnson and Prime Minister, very pleased to have you. Merci, merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Emmanuel. Je suis ravi d'être ici à Paris. In view of, of what you have just said and in view of the, your remarks uh, overnight about Brexit, I want to come straight to, the, uh, to that particular point. I want to make it absolutely clear to you, uh, Emmanuel, to the French people, uh, that, of course, I want a deal. And I think we can get a deal, and a good deal. And I was powerfully encouraged by our conversations last night in Berlin with our mutual friends. And I know that with energy and with creativity and application, we can find a way forward for all our businesses and our citizens. But as you yourself has ju have just pointed out, uh, Emmanuel, uh, it is vital for trust in politics that uh, if you have a referendum, then you should act on the instructions of the voters. And that is why we must come out of the EU on October the 31st, deal or no deal. And then, of course, we can take our relationship forward. And when I say take it forward, I agree with you wholeheartedly, uh, Emmanuel, that it is a quite extraordinary friendship. At this moment, in Mali, French troops are being conveyed in British helicopters as we work together to fight terrorism in the Sahel. As we stand here together side by side at the Elysee, uh, British troops and French troops are side by side in Estonia protecting the eastern borders of NATO. And when Assad's regime used chemical weapons against uh, his own people, it was Britain and France together with our American friends uh, who showed the collective revulsion of the West in taking out those chemical weapons facilities. Uh, together, we built the world's first supersonic passenger aircraft. We built a tunnel under the channel. Uh, and today, we're actually collaborating on genomics that hold out the hope of curing the world's most intractable diseases. At your G7 in uh, Biarritz that, that you're, you're chairing, which I'm sure will be a great success, Monsieur le Président, uh, the UK and uh, France will work hand in glove, coup d'à coup, uh, to tackle climate change, to tackle the tragic loss of species and biodiversity, and as you rightly say, to ensure that every girl in the world gets 12 years of quality education. And I think whatever happens with Brexit, it is our joint ambition, UK and France, that we should deepen and intensify our economic interpenetration. And just as French buses, I'm proud to say, ply the streets of London, thanks to the unique openness of the UK economy, it is also a stunning fact that your beautiful TGVs run on steel railways made in Scunthorpe, by British Steel. Not a lot of people know that. In fact, the British ambassador didn't know that until I just told him. Uh, but there could be no more powerful metaphor, I think, for the cultural, uh, the economic, uh, the political partnership between our countries. And I'm proud to say that in spite of some of the negative predictions over the last three years, our capital city in London remains one of the biggest French cities on earth, and long may it so remain. And I know that, of course, uh, Monsieur le Président, you will want to treasure and support the hundreds of thousands of British citizens living here in France as much as we in the UK uh, will treasure and support the 3.2 million EU nationals, including French citizens in our country. So let's get Brexit done, let's get it done sensibly and pragmatically and in the interest of both sides and uh, let's, well, let's not wait until October the 31st. Let's get on now in deepening and intensifying the friendship and the partnership between us over lunch. Excellent. <laughs> Shortly. Excellent. I think we'll take two questions. 
Prime Minister Libby Vina, ITV mm. News. What does leaving without a deal actually mean? Does it uh, mean trading on WTO rules for the long term? Or is it effectively back to square one with more negotiations? And in that sense, isn't no deal a bit of a con? Well, and Monsieur, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Monsieur le Président, uh, Président uh, Angela Merkel uh, showed some flexibility in Berlin last night over the question <laughs> of uh, changing the Irish backstop. Don't you think you should cut uh, the new British Prime Minister a bit of slack as well? Uh, well, thank you very much, Libby. Uh, of course, as you know, a great deal of work has already been done to ensure that uh, the transition on October the 31st is as smooth as it possibly uh, can be. And so there are already agreements on, uh, on aviation, on financial services, many other sectors. And what we want to do now between uh, in the next uh, 71 days or whatever is remaining, we want to make sure that uh, we do all the necessary work on both sides of, of the channel to make sure that whether we get a, an agreement or not, our exit is as smooth and as uh, pain-free as possible for citizens and businesses on both sides. And that's what we're going to do. Regarding your question, well, I said it very clearly by way of an introduction. The backstop, the Irish backstop, as we call it, is a point which has been negotiated in the context of the operation, given the geography of Ireland and the past the political situation. So it is an important element which allows us, uh, first of all, to guarantee the stability in Ireland and also the integrity of the single market. These are our two goals. When we talk about flexibility, well, let me be very clear with you. These two goals have to be um, met. And uh, we therefore have to find a solution that guarantees the integrity of the single market market, we have to be able to guarantee to the companies, to the citizens, to the consumers in Europe uh, that we um, comply with the rules of the European Union and whatever comes in um, on, on the market that comes from a market which is no longer the, in the European Union um, is controlled. Then there are um, previous agreements, the Good Friday Agreement, there is also the political uh, and historical situation and the relationship between your country and Ireland, and we therefore have to uh, respect what was negotiated in this respect. And within the context of uh, the past negotiations, we should be able to do some work. As to the first question, please allow me to underline something. We talk about the withdrawal agreement, but no matter what, there will be also negotiation as to the future relationship. It will be another step, and we always handle things in the right uh, order. It's oui, si very clear, uh, Monsieur le Président, that under no circumstances, when you look at uh, the border with Northern Ireland, I'm just re repeating a point that bears repeating, under no circumstances will the UK government uh, be instituting, imposing checks or controls of any kind at that border. And uh, we think, uh, and I understand your desire to protect the integrity of the, of the single market. Of course we understand that. But we think that there are ways of protecting the integrity of the single market and allowing uh, the UK to exit from the EU whole and entire and, and perfect, as it were. And that is what we, uh, and it was very interesting to hear some of the, uh, the positive noises that we're now hearing about the ways that can be done. We look forward to developing those thoughts in, in the next few weeks. Monsieur le Président Henri Mumtaz de Politico, est-ce que vous êtes sur la même ligne que la chancelière euh, allemande qu'on peut trouver euh, une alternative au backstop en 30 jours Et Monsieur le Premier ministre, quelle est votre alternative concrète au backstop Ce que la chancelière Merkel said yesterday, and which is in compliance, which is very much in line with the discussions we've had from the very beginning, is that we need visibility in 30 days. So I just answer this to the reality of the backstop. And I believe that this also matches the, the goal of Prime Minister Johnson. No one will wait until the 31st of October, October to find uh, the right solution. But if we fail to find the right solution, of course, we could not um, 
find, uh, do whatever it takes at the last minute. So we will make the most of this period of time, and uh, Michel Barnier will be part of that, uh, the European negotiator, um, trying to find solutions without uh, totally uh, reshuffling the um, withdrawal agreement because there has always been a lot of work and it's been uh, approved by the 27. On this point, just like Chancellor Merkel, I'm also um, very much confident that uh, um, collective uh, joint in, um, uh, intelligence, we should always be able, all together, be able to find something smart within 30 days if there's goodwill on both sides, and I believe there is. I've always been um, presented as the, 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 the hard boy in the band, in the group. Um, um, but it's just that I... I've always been clear, a choice has been made, and a choice was made, and we cannot just ignore it. We will have to um, implement a decision taken by the British people and cannot walk around it. And I want to be efficient, and so this is um, what I said um, last spring and in the past. I very much uh, want all of us to find a solution. That being said, I can be very clear we will not find a new withdrawal agreement within 30 days, which will be very different from the existing one. It is just that what Michel Barnier has uh, negotiated can be amended um, while complying with the integrity of the uh, single market and, um, and, and the two goals I've mentioned, then we can find a solution. If not, it's probably a political issue, a political decision to be taken by the Prime Minister. It will not be our decision. Uh, uh, very clearly that what uh, I think what Angela Merkel was, was saying uh, last night, if I, if I got her correct, I think I was standing next to her, she said, uh, if we can do this in two years, then we can do this in, in 30 days. And I, I admire that, that can-do spirit uh, that she seemed to, to have there. And I think she's right. I think that the technical solutions are readily available, and uh, they've been discussed at great length. Uh, you can have trusted uh, trader schemes. You can have electronic pre-clearing uh, for goods moving across the border. I just want to repeat one crucial thing. Under no circumstances will the UK uh, be putting checks at the, at the frontier. And uh, we don't think it's necessary from the point of view of the EU to, uh, to do that to protect the integrity of the, of the single market. We think there are other ways of doing that. Uh, we've got, I think, adequate time to do it. Let's get on and do it. As I say, there are, there are all sorts of proposals that have already been made. I, I might direct you to an excellent uh, paper that uh, has been done by Greg Hands and other uh, MPs in, uh, in Westminster from all parties that goes through some of the ways in which you can uh, check for contraband, check for rules of origin, uh, check for uh, stop smuggling, uh, but not have uh, checks at the frontier. That's the, that's the solution. And uh, where there's a will, there's a way. Merci beaucoup. Thank Let's you. work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.